Hi Founder fans, Jason here and today's founder is John Glover, leader of the Amphibious Regiment as it became known. Now John Glover had started from pretty humble background. He was actually started life, his father had died when he was young, he began life as a shoemaker. Though he eventually becomes a fisherman and then eventually makes his way up and becomes the captain of a boat and then he becomes a ship owner and then he starts a merchant house and he's really a uh, good old fashioned Horatio Alger rags to riches story. Now, during this time, Glover had spent a long time serving in the local militia. And being from Marblehead, Massachusetts, well, when the Patriots started getting angry at Great Britain, John Glover was among those Patriots. And when the uh, war breaks out at Lexington and Concord, Glover goes with his men to the Siege of Boston. And it's during this time that the colonel in his unit passes away. And Glover actually takes over as colonel. Now, this is extremely important because... Glover was uh, not just a, sh a fisherman, but most of his unit was fishermen. And this became very important to the war, especially once George Washington shows up. Now, when George Washington gets there, he talks to Glover and he recruits several people to be privateers. And John Glover's ship, the Hannah, which is named after his daughter, is the first ship that George Washington asked to be outfit as a privateer. And Glover's first ship, Hannah, is often considered, though it is arguable, there are other ships that make this argument, but some consider Glover's ship, the Hannah, to be the first ship in the Continental Navy, aka the predecessor to the modern American Navy. Now, again, there are several other ships that also make this claim, but it's a fun fact. What's also fun is that since most of John's men were fishermen and good boatsmen. Well, once the army moves to Long Island, there's a little bit of fighting there. And then the Americans famously, by cover of fog in the middle of the night, evacuate Long Island for the island of Manhattan right under the British's noses. And who was in charge of this? Well, General Washington asked John Glover to take over. And his men piloted piloted the separate boats that carried the Continental Army to safety on the island of Manhattan. Now, this isn't even the most famous boating incident of the war that Glover's involved with, because Glover sticks around. A few months later, the Americans have suffered loss after loss after loss. Morale is done, and George Washington wants to boost morale by winning a victory already. And this is done famously at the battles of Trenton and Princeton. But before they go to Trenton and Princeton, they have to cross the Delaware, the icy, freezing cold Delaware. It's one of the most famous events in American history. And you might see where I'm going with this because who was it that George Washington went to and said, hey, can you get my army across this Delaware? Well, of course, he went to John Glover and his regiment, I believe it was the 14th Regiment of Massachusetts that uh, eventually falls into the Continental Army. They are generally known as the amphibious, I can't say that word, amphibious regiment, although that's an unofficial title. And Glover's amphibious regiment gets all the Continental Army that they can get onto little boats and rows them across. He organizes all these separate boats into one unifying landing force. Now, he's only able to get about half the Continental Army across the water. It was extremely icy. It was a very dangerous trip. It was the middle of the night. There are various reasons he had setbacks, but this, one of George Washington's most famous moments, is actually orchestrated by John Glover. Now, interestingly enough, John Glover's wife is sick about this time, and he leaves the Continental Army to go take care of her. She does pass away, uh, and he doesn't want to return. In fact, I have two quotes here. Uh, Washington writes to Glover and says, You've been promoted by the Continental Congress to Brigadier General in the Continental Army. And Glover says, I could wish myself qualified, but when I consider my own inabilities and inexperience, I cannot think myself in any degree capable of doing the duty. In other words, I don't know if I'm good enough to be a brigadier general. That's awfully nice of you, George, but I don't think I can handle it. And George Washington is not a man you say no to, because I have another quote here from Washington in response to Glover's letter. Washington says, Our enemies count upon the resignation of every officer of rank at this time as a distrust of and desertion from the cause, and they rejoice accordingly. In other words, if you don't come back and serve as Brigadier General, you're doing exactly what the British want, because they get to say to their men, look, the officers in the Continental Army don't even want to serve. And with that, John Glover quickly changed his mind and promptly returned to George Washington. He serves through most of the war, though he does fall to ill health 
uh, a little bit later in 1782. So after Yorktown, after most of the hostilities are really over, uh, he does resign before technically the war is declared over, but he serves for almost the whole thing. Uh, and then serves a lot in the local government. He ends up being part of Massachusetts Ratification Convention for the Constitution, serves the Massachusetts Assembly for several years, uh, but mostly sticks to local government and passes away uh, just about the time John Adams is becoming president. So that's a brief overview of the life of John Glover, leader of the Amphibious Regiment, which I'm finally saying correctly at the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit like. If you're new here, definitely subscribe for more Revolution content all week long, and a different founder of the day every single morning. I will be back with you tomorrow with tomorrow's founder.